In the Marshall Islands, climate change is causing rising temperatures, sea level rise and saltwater intrusion, affecting health and well-being and intensifying diseases due to unsafe water and disrupted food patterns. Its impact on physical and mental health necessitates cross-sector action to protect public health and boost health services resilience to these climate changes. The Marshall Islands is adapting to these climatic impacts through a holistic approach that combines health, lifestyle changes, and climate resilience. The Republic of the Marshall Islands, RMI, is a small nation with a large oceanic footprint. Boasting 29 atolls and five coral islands spread across over 4,600 square kilometers in the North Pacific Ocean. RMI consists of a total of around 1,225 low-lying islands with very few places higher than three meters above sea level. The RMI government, together with stakeholders, developed a National Climate Change and Health Action Plan, NCCHAP, in 2012. Subsequent to this, at COP23 in 2017, the World Health Organization launched a special initiative on climate change and health in small island developing states to address climate-induced risks. With the support from the European Union-funded Global Climate Change Alliance Plus Scaling Up Pacific Adaptation, GCCA Plus Super Project, the RMI Ministry of Health and Human Services began reviewing the NCC HAP through extensive stakeholder consultations and scientific literature reviews. In December 2022, the Ministry of Health and Human Services launched the second version of the NCC HAP. The revised NCC HAP aims to enhance awareness of the health impacts of climate change, fortify the health system's capacity, incorporate health considerations into other sectors, and boost community resilience and capacity building. Alongside these policy initiatives, in 2019, the GCCA Plus Super Project also began working with the Ministry of Health and Human Services, alongside other partners, to strengthen community health, lifestyles and atoll agriculture in selected atolls through the Lifestyle Changes and Climate Resilience in RMI LCCR initiative. This builds on and expands pivotal healthcare work of the Community Lifestyle Program, which was piloted on Majuro Atoll starting in 2015 by the Ministry of Health and Human Services and Canvasback Missions, Inc. The new initiative expanded the scope of the Community Lifestyle Program to outer islands and integrated established atoll agricultural practices, cooking and agriculture classes, home gardens, alongside regular health checks and exercise groups. This has laid the foundation for a more sustainable and holistic approach to health and resilience amid the changing climate. Under the GCCA Plus Super Project, the Pacific Community engaged Canvasback Wellness Center in 2019 to implement the LCCR project from 2020 to 2022. Collaborating agencies included entities such as the Ministry of Health and Human Services, Ministry of Natural Resources and Commerce, Taiwan Technical Mission, Marshall Islands Organic Farmers Association, and the College of the Marshall Islands, among others. My name is Katrine and I'm a dietitian from Australia through Australian Volunteers Program, which is funded by the Australian Government. We're here in Jaluit. We're doing an assessment through the Super Grant. So we've been doing a nutritional assessment, looking at what people eat and how this is reflected in their weight, their blood pressure, their blood sugar, and also their waist circumference. So we've also been looking at the school students, what they eat. So it's about 600 students in the high school and they're fed three times a day through the school cafeteria. All the food is transported from Majuro, um, so it has to last a long time because they only get food four times per year. So they don't really use any local foods in the school menu. Mostly they have a lot of bread for breakfast, for lunches and dinners. They have white rice with some gravy, with some canned meat and some canned vegetables. Um, but of course this is not enough for a growing child. So we've been talking to the kids about how they feel about the food and they say there's not enough food, they have to eat more foods, so they have to buy it from the stores here and cook it themselves. Um, so that's hopefully something we can work on and try and get more local produce, get some bananas and some breadfruit and things that they grow here, get that part of the school menu. And then we've also been looking in the community. So in the community, in some of the places further away from Jabor, so on Image and on Jaluit Jaluit, they eat quite a lot of local produce. 
However, in Jabur they have more stores, so they have more rice and donuts and bread and things like that. But the good thing is that everyone is really keen to make some changes, so they're always asking, what can we do? What should we do differently? And what we, I think we can especially work on as well is getting them to use the banana flour, because they all have banana flowers, but they don't know how to eat it. So everyone is very interested to find out what to do. So I think there's a lot of potential and I think we'll be able to make a difference here. In 2020, the LCCR project conducted agricultural assessments and initiated home gardening in three Jaluit Atoll communities and Majuro's Delap Uliga Darit Corridor. Major agricultural sites were Jaluit and Jabor, while 280 households in Majuro were evaluated for home gardening suitability. Home gardening initiatives saw the establishment of 54 raised bed gardens in Jaluit and 93 in Majuro, all with wicking systems for irrigation. These raised beds, situated around one meter above ground level, were designed to protect the crops from saltwater intrusion and livestock damage. These were mostly allocated to households with individuals suffering chronic health conditions, such as diabetes and hypertension, so as to promote healthier diets. Gardening tools were also provided. Between 2020 to 2022, 21 training events were held for 235 participants, covering various atoll agricultural practices, such as placement of the gardens and pest control. In Jaluit, pruning of breadfruit and pandanus trees was taught, a community garden was established, and a greenhouse was constructed for future seed production and propagation. The LCCR, supported by government entities, facilitated health worker training, patient screenings and supplied medical equipment. Over three years, 3,187 patients were screened and 18 health workers were digitally trained in record keeping. The program also provided nutrition education, cooking classes and established separate exercise groups for men and women. Plans to expand the LCCR, given its success in promoting health and sustainable agriculture, are in progress. In Madro, you know, we have the health workers that report in to the hospital and help patients get in to see the doctors. So that's been a huge help. And I think other countries, uh, when we've done other reportings, they've already started doing uh, similar things with their community health centers. So that's already in a way in play. Uh, what we've kind of brought to the table that's new inside of that model is adding more of a holistic approach to when you identify those target patients. For example, let's say your community health worker is visiting a patient whose family has a lot of disease, maybe it's uh, diabetes, heart disease, those things are pretty across the board on the Pacific Island countries. Once that family is identified on Madro, we not only send out the health worker, but we enroll them into the nearest, we call them kind of like walking clubs, but we've also done sports clubs, you know, village sports, something that will get them up and get them active again, as well as get them into the hospital and get them taken care of from that side. And then we also come in with the agricultural team and do the cooking, the gardening. So it, it creates a holistic approach to taking, uh, you know, where you would normally just do one side of it. So I think that can be easily replicated. Initiatives like the revised National Climate Change and Health Policy and Action Plan and the Lifestyle Changes and Climate Resilience Project have successfully integrated health services, sustainable agriculture, and climate change adaptation strategies. These successful programs serve as a beacon of hope for other small island developing states, demonstrating that unity, innovation, and determination can foster adaptation and resilience in the face of climate change. <laughs>